Hello again. Welcome back to the second episode of our Dev Block series. I'm Josh, the game director for Beat Saber here at Beat Games. For those who are joining us for the very first time, Dev Blocks are a platform to talk about what's new in the game, show some behind the scenes, and to answer community questions. In this episode, we'll discuss our recent releases, some upcoming stuff, and introduce you, our players, to some new faces to the series. Let's start off with our most recent release. We're proud to introduce a new music pack from the one and only Princess of Pop, Britney Spears. Britney Spears is credited with influencing the revival of teen pop during the late 1990s and early 2000s, selling over 150 million records worldwide, making her one of the world's best-selling music artists. Her music continues to be iconic and still trends across social media. You're lying if you've never had one of her songs on loop in your head. After Lady Gaga and the Billie Eilish music packs, both released in 21, we're happy to bring another influential female pop artist to the game. The music pack is packed with 11 hits, featuring some of Britney's biggest tracks like Toxic, Baby One More Time, Gimme More, and Oops, I Did It Again. Which track is your favorite? If you ask our music director, Caroline, she'd answer all of them. You'll for sure meet Caroline in our future episodes. So, what's included with the music pack? It includes its own unique environment, which we'll dive into soon. And as always, all levels feature arcs, chains, and the latest lighting tech, including the tech we recently introduced with our OST7 pack and some more. All songs are also playable in multiplayer. What's a Britney pack without some dancing? Similar to our BTS pack, the level designers heavily focused the beat maps to match the official choreography from the songs. If you look closely, you might even be able to spot some of the iconic moves. Can you spot any of them? You'll find some clear references in Oops I Did It Again, Baby One More Time, and even Circus. We'll leave it up to you to find any others in the pack. We hope you're excited and have been enjoying, or should I say, dancing to the pack. For those who haven't experienced the Princess of Pop in VR yet, you can expand your library with this new music pack right now. You can get it for $13.99 for all 11 songs, or $1.99 per song or equivalent of your currency. If you're brand new to Beat Saber, you can kick off your journey with our discounted bundle containing the Beat Saber game and the Britney Spears music pack for $39.99. Available now on MetaQuest, PSVR, and Steam platforms. A friendly reminder that in June this year, our final release for MetaQuest 1 launched, which was OST 7. Now let's dig into the environment and its lighting. As part of this release, we're launching a brand new environment. As always, our tech art team truly outdid themselves. Let me introduce Piotta, our tech artist who has been driving the efforts on the Britney Spears Music Pack environment to tell you a bit more about the environment and what's special about it, because there's a lot. Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, with this environment, we wanted to refer to the look of the 90s. Instead of stretching the environment into infinity, we opted to close it in creating something akin to a concert stage, or what I would call a circus-like arena, with plastic and rounded elements. We have introduced at least two new features worth mentioning. The first one is the lasers, where you can now control the width of the endpoint for each laser using the FX line to create theater-like white spotlights. Secondly, we implemented a new screen tag that allows us to switch icons on the upper display building upon our previous components developed for Daft Punk helmets and visor text displays. Due to the size and amount of details visible, we wanted to ensure that when looping these icons, the step value would be pixel perfect. Additionally, if you look closer at the dust particles around the player place, you will notice that these particles are heart-shaped, which is a unique touch exclusively to the Britney Spears environment. Even though it is a small detail, it brings the atmosphere of this environment together. I back to you, Josh. <laughs> Mesmerizing stuff. Thanks, Piotr. We hope you enjoyed that behind the scenes look at our latest environment. Britney Spears hasn't been our only release since our latest dev block now, has it? In September, we released our very first paid shock drop, adding the track Houdini from no one else than Eminem himself into Beat Saber. You might have been curious about what shock drops are in the first place and what's our plan with them going forward. 
Have you ever found yourself hearing a brand new trending song out in the world and thought to yourself, that'd be so cool. It'd be so much fun to play in Beat Saber. Us too, all the time. By introducing shock drops, we're in fact introducing a new development process, which allows us to take a new trending hit song and have it in the game as quickly as possible. Houdini is our first in this new series. One noticeable difference you will find with shock drop releases is their reuse of existing environments, though we can't help ourselves when tweaking something. With Houdini, we utilized our amazing hip hop mixtape environment and replaced the boombox with the iconic Eminem logo. As a reminder, you can find this new track in a new section of the game called Shock Drops. So why Houdini? Houdini has been and still is trending around the world since its debut before the summer and quickly became a viral summer track. When we saw the popularity of Godzilla from our hip hop mixtape, we knew for sure that you want more Eminem, and so it was a natural match. It's clear that you're still enjoying this track because it continues to be our number one most played paid song in the game and sixth most played song overall this year. We see it even boosted Godzilla's play count up to 11th place. We see you love playing Eminem. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more Shock Drops in the future. If there's a hit trending song that you think makes a great fit for our Shock Drop initiative, then let us know on our socials. Digging into the development side of things, I can report that we are still actively working on having our OST7 light shows work on PS4. We have made very good progress and are hoping soon to have them available to our PSVR1 players. Since June, we have had many bug fixes alongside our releases also. From filter systems and sped up music to spectator issues and audio latency system fixes, even practice mode stuttering, local leaderboards, language localization, clipping fixes, and a ton more. Make sure to check out the patch notes alongside each release for more information. As always, if you have any bugs or problems, please let us know on our socials so we can actively get them resolved. I'd like to also share a sneak peek bit of information that we're working on a system related to beatmaps and their difficulty levels. Have you ever found yourself completing a song on say the hard difficulty and it was quite simple, but then when jumping to another song and playing it also on the hard difficulty, it suddenly feels much more difficult? There are several intended reasons for this, but I'd like to mention that we are developing a system to address it. Hope to share more in a later dev block. In the last dev block, we ended it asking for you all to ask us some questions. I'm super happy to see all of the responses we received. Although we are not able to answer all of them, here's a couple we've picked out. Please continue to add your questions in the comments so that we can answer more in the future. Let's start with our first question. In the vein of remastering content, I have loved the reworked versions of legacy maps, such as Panic at the Disco, Imagine Dragons, Lincoln Park, etc. In the long term, are there any plans to remaster other DLCs or early OSTs and extras? Yes, you absolutely can look forward to more remasters in the future. Stay tuned for more information. Question. Will 360 and 90 degree levels return? Those are some of my favorite levels in the whole game and they're super fun. It would be great to see some of the newer packs adapted to have those levels. For this one, let's jump over to Jacob the lead engineer working on our beloved beatmap editor. Thanks, Josh. I remember playing my first 90 and 360 degree levels when Panic! at the Disco came out, and that's when I thought, damn, this is it. However, adding these levels into our 3D editor is no small task, especially considering all the mechanics and environments that we've added over the years. Don't worry, it is being actively worked on, and they are coming back. Thanks, Jacob. On to the next question. Changing controller settings for the better really helps beating Expert and Expert Plus maps. Currently, the game features only simple sliders for changing rotation and position of the savers. Are there any planned enhancements to the feature in the future? Yes, controller settings are getting a rework. I can share at this point that we will be adding the ability to control each hand independently, as well as having controller profiles so you can save different setups. There are some other features we're finishing off in relation to this feature before we push them to the game. Question. I've been wondering how the DLC packs are made. Like, do you work with the artists or a team they work with? What decides what songs go into each pack? 
Jumping over to Batty for this one, our community manager. Thank you, Josh. And thank you for the question. Really good one. We work closely with artists, their management teams and labels when choosing songs for the music packs. We always look for the most popular tracks from the artist, get the recommendations from the artist teams, but we also taking into the considerations which tracks are available licensing-wise. But the most important aspect is that the music must be right for the game. Not all of the songs are fun in Beat Saber and our goal is to make sure we select only the tracks that will be enjoyable when playing. You may sometimes see a song or two included in a pack that aren't, let's say, chart-topping, but you may find them to be one of the more fun or challenging levels in the pack. Selecting the right music is a multi-month process that we take really seriously. Now, back to Josh. Thanks, Batty, for that. Question. Dev blocks are a great thing to see. Is there any plans to release a roadmap? I'm interested to know what music packs are in the works. Thank you so much. We're happy you like the dev blocks. There's nothing more than I'd like to announce than all the exciting things we're working on and the partnerships we've got in the works. But sharing a roadmap is not an easy thing, especially when it comes to music licensing. Things push and pull, and we don't want to get anyone hyped until we're 100% sure with the licensing and are confident about the release. We've been responsible a few times over the years in sharing a feature or an artist that has been then delayed or pulled, which hasn't been very nice to you, our players. Sometimes our own excitement gets the better of us. I can at least mention, though, that we are aiming to still have more very exciting music coming this year. Thank you for watching. We hope you liked this episode. It's certainly not our last for this year. If you have anything to share, head to the comments section and let us know. Questions, feedback, shock drop ideas, all of it. Throw them in the comments or on our socials. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.